Day 3, Tuesday, October 25th, Genesis 3, Genesis 3 1 24 NKJV. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin, and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to guard the way to the tree of life. Daily Deep Dive In verse 1 we are introduced to the serpent. Revelation 12 9 clearly identifies this serpent as Satan. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. It says he was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The word beast in Hebrew is most often translated live or life. This is the same word used about, Gen 2-7 And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. This being was more cunning than anything living that God had created on the land. The Hebrew for cunning is Aramage 6175 and means subtle, shrewd, crafty, sly. It's used here to tell us that Satan specifically designed his deception in a subtle, crafty way that was not straightforward. Also, we are used to living in a world where people try to deceive, scam and manipulate us. Eve had not been lied to or manipulated before. What a shock it would be to be deceived for the first time. Here's several paragraphs from the UCG reading program. The chapter begins with the appearance of the serpent, whom Revelation 12 9 identifies as Satan. Satan's interaction with Eve provides a very instructive lesson in how he entices us to sin. First, notice his question, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? 
Genesis 3 1, NIV, this is emphatically not what God had said. God had said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it you will surely die, Genesis 2 16-17, NIV, God had placed only one restriction upon Adam and Eve, nothing else was withheld from them. Satan's question was designed to magnify the restriction beyond its true proportion, to distort Eve's perception of right limits, and thereby to instill a sense of being personally wronged. She replied that only one tree was forbidden, but with doubt planted, her perception altered, her emotions stirred and an erroneous premise in mind, Satan then offered a very different explanation of the situation. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil, Genesis 3 4-5. Satan's words were a mixture of lie and deception. The assertion that Eve would not die was an outright lie. His statement that Eve would know good and evil was a deception. For the true nature of knowing good and evil was not disclosed to Eve. Satan's appealing assertion would have its effect upon Eve's unenlightened mind. As affirmed in Genesis 3:22, Adam and Eve did indeed come to be like God in the sense of knowing good and evil. But just what does this mean? To answer, we might ask, in what way does God know good and evil? One very important way is that he determines it, that is, he decides what constitutes good and evil. And that is what Adam and Eve now did, they determined for themselves good and evil. In Genesis 3 6, Eve saw that the, forbidden, tree was good for food. That wasn't true according to God's standard. But according to her own new standard, it was. In reality, she made that determination in her mind, albeit with Satan's influence and mankind has followed suit ever since. For there is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 14 12. Proverbs 16 25. This is the bitter result of relying on ourselves to determine good and evil, right and wrong, rather than trusting in what God reveals on the matter. It should also be pointed out here that while Eve fell prey to Satan's deception, there was greater culpability on the part of Adam who may have been right there with Eve during the talk with Satan, compare Genesis 3 6. As the Apostle Paul later explained, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived, fell into transgression. 1 Timothy 2 14. Adam freely chose to join his wife in transgression, perhaps to avoid the pain of separation from her that would have ensued. In any case, Paul tells us that it was through one man, that, sin entered the world, and death through sin, Romans 5:12. that man being Adam. In verse 6, we see that the woman evaluated the tree and saw that it had edible fruit and that it was both pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise. The word pleasant means a longing, desire, lust, covetousness. Eve knew she wasn't to take from this tree, but a lustful desire had formed. The word for desirable means to desire, to covet, to take pleasure in. The same word is used in Exodus 20:17 and Deuteronomy 5:21 in regards to coveting or desiring your neighbor's house or wife. In James 1:14 to 15 it says, "But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death." Satan had crafted a situation and through lies and deception planted a seed within Eve. She began down this path to sin that James laid out and so she took of the fruit and ate. She then gives some to her husband, who was not deceived, and, he too ate. Mankind sinned for the first time and we've all followed suit since. Notice, verses 8 and 9, in this new sinful state, they hide from God but God does not hide from them. He seeks them out. Luke 15 to 4 What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? In verse 12 and 13 we see that man's habit of not taking personal responsibility for our actions starts right away, blaming others for our failings, instead of being responsible for our own actions, even when others share in the situation in verse 15 has been called proto-evangelium meaning first gospel. 
Here we are given a prophecy that is important for all of us to understand. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Notice first that it says her seed, which the translators have appropriately capitalized. In Genesis 22:18, is reads in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Later Paul in Galatians 3:16 states now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. In Genesis 3:15, it says that this seed, Jesus Christ, would bruise the head of the serpent, and the serpent would bruise his heel. This word for bruise means to bruise, to crush. Jesus Christ crushed Satan through his perfect life, his death paying the penalty of sin for all of mankind and through God's resurrection of him from the dead that he may be the firstborn of many brethren. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15:57, But, thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Commentators bring out that a serpent's poison gland is lodged in their head and a bruise on that part of their head is fatal. However, Satan, only bruised the heel of our Savior. Satan would cause terrible suffering to Christ through the process of the Roman crucifixion. But Satan would not be triumphant. To the woman slash wife God said in verse 16 that greatly increase her sorrow, meaning pain, labor, hardship, in physical conception and pregnancy and that in sorrow, pain, labor, hardship, she would bring forth children. It's worth noting that through sin and man's choices, God's desire to bring forth children into his family has greatly increased in difficulty and hardship. There are a lot of spiritual parallels worth considering between the difficulty of women conceiving, miscarriages, etc., to that of what God has gone through. Additionally, God tells the woman slash wife that her desire, Hebrew tzherka meaning a stretching out after or a longing. This is different than the words used in verse 6 that we discussed up above regarding lustful desire. God says she will stretch out for or long for her husband, but that he will rule, Hebrew mashal, to rule, have dominion. As I considered the deep meaning of this, I found these two words paired again in the next chapter. This time God says this to Cain Gen 4-7 if you do well will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire, tzherka, stretching out for, is for you, but you should rule, mashal, rule, over it. Here Cain is told that sin wants to control and lead him, but he must lead it. Back in Genesis, is God telling Eve that she would have a desire to control and lead her husband, but that he would rule over her instead? What I do know, is this was not God's original design for a woman's life but through her sin, her life was now much more difficult and would never be blessed in the way God wanted for her. We may see more clarification through God's next words to Adam. In verse 17 to 19, God says to Adam because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Similarly to Eve, God tells Adam, because of your sin, life is now going to be much harder than what it would have been for you. God says this was because Adam heeded the voice of his wife. This word means to to listen to and to obey. This is the deep meaning Hebrew word Shama H8085 used famously in Deuteronomy 6 4 here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This word Shama means to take in the sound, understand it and obey it. God tells Adam, that because he shamed his wife and disobeyed God, that his daily labor in life would be much more difficult. No longer would the ground be easy to work but by God's curse, it would now be difficult and life would be a toil for his whole life until he died and turned back into dust in the ground. Verse 20, Adam names his wife Eve meaning life giver because all of mankind would be born from her and her children. In verse 21 it tells us that God makes, fashions, a covering, from a Hebrew root meaning to cover, from animal hide and clothes them. 
From Adam Clark commentary it is very likely that the skins out of which their clothing was made were taken off animals whose blood had been poured out as a sin offering to God, for as we find Cain and Abel offering sacrifices to God, we may fairly presume that God had given them instructions on this head, nor is it likely that the notion of a sacrifice could have ever occurred to the mind of man without an express revelation from God. It is consistent with God's plan that this first sin of mankind would require a blood sacrifice to bring them back into a relationship with God, that God created a way, a path, to cover them. We understand that Jesus Christ would ultimately fulfill this by giving his life as an atonement for sin. Man is banished from the environment God had designed for them and for their good and blocks access to the tree of life by a cherubim, cherub, angelic being.